Statistics and Excel. Poisson distribution roller coaster line example. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, getting ready for a smooth, soothing XL. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because, apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can get right to the heart of the practice problem. Blank tab, basically a blank worksheet except for this image on it but you don't really need that to move forward so that we can practice formatting the cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going, working with the Poisson distribution, which often deals with line weighting situations as it will be with our example here, line weighting situations for a roller coaster. We're actually first going to be thinking about and imagining the mirroring of a situation where we're sitting with a stopwatch at the line to see how many people arrive during certain intervals and then we'll make observations of that data the observation basically being that it seems to be following a poisson type distribution at least for the most part and then we'll use our poisson dot dist to plot a curve in accordance with the poisson distribution and the idea then being that possibly the Poisson distribution curve can help us to make projections and predictions into the future about this particular data set. Let's go on to the blank tab and uh, start working our problem. So we're going to say that X is going to be, well, let's first format the entire worksheet. I'm going to put my cursor on the triangle, right click on the worksheet. We're going to format the worksheet as we do every time. I'm going to make it currency and uh let's make it currency negative numbers bracketed and red no dollar sign i'm going to start off with no decimals and then add the decimals as i need them okay i'm going to scroll in just a little bit as well all right so now i'm going to say that x is going to be equal to the arrivals during one minute one minute I'm going to make the whole thing bold, putting my cursor on the triangle, home tab, font group, everything is bold. And these are going to be arrivals for a roller coaster ride line. That's what we're measuring. So we're going to be sitting there with our stopwatch and we're going to be thinking and we're going to be measuring now or counting however many people arrive during each one minute time period. So it gets a little bit difficult to wrap your mind around so you're imagining you're sitting there with a stopwatch and you're every one minute you're starting the stopwatch you're seeing how many people come in during that one minute uh, time frame and we're marking that information down now we're going to want to try to mirror that information uh, with our random generator in a similar way as we did with the dice rolling so we're not going to use a simple formula we're not just going to say this equals the random function between because the randomness has to be in accordance with the poisson distribution so there's still a random element but it has to be accordance to the distribution and in order to generate it we're going to have to give excel the uh the mean so the mean we're going to say is uh, let's say the mean is going to be 2.75 and i'm going to add decimals to that cell home tab number group adding some decimals now obviously if we were sitting there with our stopwatch we might not know the mean that's what we're looking for but when we randomly generate the data we need to be able to have that uh, in uh, excel for it to be able to generate the data so we're going to now 
generate the data. To do that, I'm gonna go into the data here. I'm gonna go into the analytics and you've got this data analysis. If you don't have that, you can add it. You go to the file tab, you go to the options down below, and then uh, you wanna go to the add-ins on the left. And then in the add-ins, you want the add-ins here, go. And then you wanna be picking that uh, analysis tool pack. And if that's checked off, then you should have the analysis in the uh, data tab analysis group. Okay, so first I'm gonna say where I want to put this. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be the X data that we're calculating or finding. Let's make this black and white font group. I'm gonna make it black and white and center it. And then I'm gonna put my data right here and we're gonna imagine we're counting a thousand uh, periods of two minutes, right? So we got our stopwatch for a thousand periods of, of one minute intervals. So let's go to the data and then we're gonna go to the analysis and data here. And so now I want to have the random number generator and I'm gonna say, okay, random numbers in accordance with, I'm gonna put one for the number of variables. That's gonna be the columns. So I just want one column. Number of random numbers, we're gonna put a thousand of them. So that means it's gonna output a thousand numbers mirroring, mirroring a thousand minute intervals that we've, we're sitting there with our stopwatch. And then we're gonna say that we want it in accordance with a Poisson uh, distribution and Lambda is going to be the mean, which I'm gonna put at 2.75. So we need that condition. We wouldn't have that if we we're sitting there with our stopwatch, although we might have an idea of what it is uh, given past, given you know the past performance as we're sitting there at our line, putting people on the roller coaster and whatnot. So I'm gonna put this on E3. And so there we have it and that's it. So let's go ahead and say, okay, so now we're imagining that we're sitting there and we, we have our stopwatch and for the, for the first minute, four people arrived. Next time, three people arrived and then two people arrived. Notice that the mean over here is not a whole number, right? Obviously, uh, you know, it's because it's an average. So if we're sitting there with our stopwatch, it's not like 2.75 people can actually arrive within a one minute time period, right? Because we're not, it's not like we're gonna half count someone if they like are missing a leg or something. <laughs> so they're still a whole person, even if they don't have like a limb. Anyways, you know what I'm talking about. So we're gonna say, so every one minute, so in this one minute, six period people arrived in this one minute, uh, three people arrived and so on and so forth. So this was in accordance with a Poisson distribution of a mean of 2.75, but there's still that element of randomness to these generated uh, numbers. Okay, so, so now what I'm gonna do is say, let's put these into like our buckets. So I'm gonna say, this is our data. We're gonna say these are the number of arrivals. And this is gonna be the frequency. And then we'll have the percent of total over here. I'm gonna make this into headers. So I'm gonna select these items, home tab, font group, black, white. We're gonna center it and then I'm gonna wrap it. All right, and so then we're gonna say, okay, the number of arrivals, I'm gonna, the, Notice when we think about these arrivals at a ride, it could go up forever in one minute time period. You could have infinite number of people show up in theory, but that's not in practice what's actually going to happen because it's going to taper off at the tail end uh, as we go. So I'm just going to go up to a, a reasonable number. Let's just go up to like 29, let's say. So I'm going to start at zero. You could have zero people show up in a one minute time period, one and so on and so forth. I'm going to put my cursor here and drag it down to get to 29. Let's go to 29. Why 29? I just picked it randomly. Then we're going to use our frequency, which is our buckets. Remember that you could use, you might say, hey, look, I'm going to use the count if function, which would look like this equals count if brackets. The range is this shift. I'm holding control shift down and then control backspace to get back up comma criteria is that and then enter 
However, sometimes when you use that formula, like sometimes it gives us a number that it's not taken up because like it's not a whole number or something like that. So the frequency spill function is a safer thing to use typically. So I'm gonna say, no, let's not do that. Let's use the frequency, which is gonna be equals frequency. And this is gonna be an array function. And I'm gonna pick up my data array. I'm gonna put my cursor in E3, kind of hold down control shift down arrow, takes me down to the bottom. I wanna get back up to the top without unhighlighting this, holding control backspace, getting me back to the top comma and then the bends the bends are going to be starting on g3 holding control shift down takes me down to that 29 to get back up holding down control backspace back up to the top and enter so now it's spilled it down i don't want it to go down to 33 here so i'm just going to cut off the last bit so it, it's going to i'm just going to say bring that to 31 and see if that so now I've got it nice and even. So that looks good. Now I can double check if my numbers make sense because the total here should add up to a uh, thousand because I spit out a thousand numbers, right? So I'm gonna equals the sum. I'm gonna use my keystroke, fast keystroke, alt equals, sums up, sum it up the right area, enter a thousand. So it looks like it's picking up uh, the right numbers. And then I can look at the percent of the total if I look at the percent of the total, I can say this equals this divided by divided by the total. And then I wanna copy that down. So I'm gonna say F4 so I can copy it down and then enter. And then I will percentify that. Home tab, numbers group, percentify it, add a couple decimals possibly, double clicking on the little fill handle copying it down so there's uh the percentages of the total so when we did our when we sat there with our stopwatch we counted for every one minute you know for a thousand one minute time intervals 62 times zero people showed up which is 6.2 percent 171 times one person showed up which is 17.1 percent 243 times out of a thousand minutes we sat there with our stopwatch uh 20 243 showed up and then three people showed up uh, 232 times which is 23.2 of the total and so on and so forth so now that we have our data then we can say okay well what if i was to plot this data you know what what would it look like if we were to plot it and notice i i could plot either one of these so i could say Let's take the actual numbers and I'll bring it down to here. And so I'm going to say, let's say insert and then go to the charts. And then I'm going to make this a bar chart and we'll say bar chart. And there it is. So I've plotted uh, the frequency and let's go into my data. I'm going to go into my data up top. I'm in the chart design data. And then the frequency looks good. I'm gonna adjust this one, however, to pick up the range that I want, which is from zero here down to the 29. Uh, control up, I'm sorry. Control shift down, shift up to pick up just down to 29. Okay, and then okay. So so there we have it. And I can look at that and say, hmm, I could see, you could see it's kind of skewed uh, to the right here and it's got that distribution that looks like it might be you know, a Poisson distribution. I can also do it this way with the percentages. If I select all the percentages and I insert a bar chart, right? I can go, hmm, let's do this with the percentages and I'll do the same thing, data tab. This looks good. I wanna make the data over here on G3, control shift down, shift up, enter and okay right so you've got now you've got it in terms of percents versus the the whole numbers and so that's one indication that if we start looking at our data and say hmm that you know it looks kind of like it might fit a poisson distribution why might that be useful because the poisson distribution will allow me to have uh, an even line 
uh, that will allow me to make predictions more, you know, more easily because now I can st now I can make predictions based on, you know, a function as opposed to you know just randomly generated numbers, right? If this if I did this and it came up to some jagged landscape looking thing, then I wouldn't be able to plot any kind of uh, curve on top of it with a nice, fairly relatively simple equation. I know the Poisson equation doesn't look you know really simple, but it equates to a, a nice smooth line as opposed to you know a jagged landscape looking thing which would be much more difficult or a complicated uh, type of thing you need calculus to, to do it right okay now I'm also I'm gonna move this to the right now I'm gonna move these to the right so that's gonna be an indication for us that we might be able to use Poisson another if I I'm gonna make column J a little smaller and I could say okay what's the mean of the data so now I can calculate the mean now, if I was to do a Poisson curve, then I'd have to know what the mean was. Remember that we took the mean in order to generate the data. But in real life, I, w I wouldn't know the mean possibly. And I would ha I could guess it, right? I have an idea maybe. But then I now I can calculate the mean based on this data, right? So now that we've sat there with our stopwatch. So I can say the mean is going to be equal to the average brackets of the data control shift down and enter so now we just took the average and if i add some decimals home tab uh uh number group adding some decimals it comes out pretty close to 2.75 right and that and so that's what we need we need that mean in order to plot the poisson curve so now that we have our data we can calculate the mean and we can plot our uh curve now another indication that we have a Poisson situation is that the mean is going to be equivalent oftentimes or roughly equivalent to the variance. So to calculate the variance, let's take our data. Remember what we did is we, we basically take all of our data and we subtract it from, uh, from the midpoint, the mean, right? So let's just do that real quick. I'm going to add some cells to do that. I'm going to put my cursor on F to G, right click and insert. And then I'm going to say, now this is going to be the mean. And then I can say, okay, now this equals that 2.73. I'm going to say F4 on the keyboard and copy that down. And then I'll just subtract every point from the mean difference. Call it the difference. So this equals this minus that. And then I'll copy that down boom and then if i scroll down to the bottom we can then say okay all the way down da, 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 da. i can just hit Control shift down all right so then we have our totals and so so this i can do the count i can do a count here if i want equals count just to put something here count and i should come up to a thousand and this is going to be the uh, sum, I'm going to say alt equals to the sum. It's going to be zero because that these are showing the amounts that are above and below the mean. I'm going to add another column, putting my cursor on column H, right click and insert. And this is going to be the uh, squared amount, squared. So now I'm going to take this caret to the second power or squared and double click copy that down and then if I go down to the bottom we're gonna say all right let's sum this up which is alt equals so now we've got uh, uh, that amount so this is going to be the squared uh, this is the squared uh, sum of difference let's say which is equaling that and then we're going to divide by the count which is we represent the formula as n which equals 1000 right so now i can divide this out and this is going to be the variance sigma squared equals this divided by this i'm going to add some decimals and you can see that comes out to 
2.55, which is fairly close to the mean, right? And then if I, and so that's gonna be the variance. And if I take the, the standard deviation, you'll recall that we take equals this, or I'm sorry, the square root, SQ square root of that, right? And that's gonna be the standard deviation. But right now we're kind of looking at that variance because if that equals the mean, that's an indication that we're in this Poisson distribution situation. Now I can also, if I wanted to calculate that variance this way, I could do it with a function, right? I can say equals VAR, variance of the population, double clicking that, and then take this whole column of our data, control shift down, shift up, so I don't pick up the total, enter and so i added a couple decimals 2.55 here's the variance s equals variance of a sample and then again i'm going to put my cursor on here control shift down shift up so i don't pick up the total and then add a couple decimals right so the idea here, so if I looked at this data set, these are gonna be the indications that I have a Poisson distribution kind of situation. I could say, okay, yeah, it looks like it, the curve looks kind of like a Poisson distribution. Uh, it's slightly uh, it's slightly skewed to the right. I've got, a, if I calculate my variance and the mean, those are roughly equal. And in a perfect Poisson relationship, those would be equal. So the closer those two are together, the more I'm going, okay, maybe I can use a, a Poisson distribution. And if I do that, then I can I can plot the an actual smooth curve and in, instead of a jagged data curve, right? And so that's what we'll do uh, next time.